right, we're going to start now introducing the concept of lists. Right? Uh, so other languages, uh, you may know something called arrays. What a list is in Python is, I've got the sample program here, it's a collection of items stored in a particular order. Items do not have to be related. So items in the list don't have to have any sort of logical relation to each other, right? It's just like if we were gonna write a grocery list or any sort of list, we'd write whatever we wanted in our list. Notice here, I've introduced something I haven't talked about before, a multi-line comment, right? So if I have then these three single quotes, right? This starts a multiple line comment, another three ends a multiple line comment. And so collection of items stored in a particular order, right? Uh, so we'll talk about the importance of order and index location in just a bit, but let's look at three example lists that I've created here. So here's a list then, that whose variable name is letters. We assign to this then the list that is contained within square brackets. So you have to use the square brackets. In this case, I just chose some letters of the alphabet, right? I made them string types by typing A, B, Z, and E. And so notice just because I chose letters of the alphabet, I don't have to put them in what we consider alphabetical order with the English alphabet. Uh, just anything I, I want in that list. As a matter of fact, they didn't have to be individual characters. They could have been multiple, uh, a string with multiple characters, like here in dogs. Here in dogs, here are different strings then. Here are four different breeds of dogs that I put in the list, right? And then I also created a list showing you that you could use numbers. So let's say that my lucky numbers were seven, 19, and 42. And notice then the length of the list doesn't always have to be the same. Here I happen to pick four things. Here I happen to pick four things. Here I just put three things in the list, right? And then we could simply print out the contents of the list. This is one thing I like about Python. We'll just say print, give it the name of the list, and it will print these out. So let's just go ahead. See, I think I've saved this in a file called dogs.py. So I'll say Python three dogs.py and notice then it printed out our list. The first list that printed out were letters. It prints out the contents of the list. It didn't give me the name of the list, right? I just said to print out the contents of this, right? And then whenever it prints a list, you know it is printing a list simply because it uses the square bracket notation, right? Inside here, it's showing me that the contents of my list that I'd stored things, right, with these quotes. Here, these are numbers. Here, then these are strings that I stored with quotes. All right. And so it's very easy then to print out the contents of a list. All right. Let's talk about what we mean by items stored in a particular order. All right. So the order is we refer to each one of these as having their own position in the list. All right. And positions always start with a zero in Python programming. Right. We might think of this as the first thing in our list, but we want to refer to it by its index position zero. So let me just get rid of printing these. Now let's say I want to print, sorry, cursor's going crazy. I want to print letters, square bracket zero at index location zero. So when I use the name of the list, and then I give it a particular location, and that has to be in square brackets. And I need to save it before we run it. Let's run it, and we can see it printed out the entire list. So when we refer to the name of the list, we refer to the entire list. But when we use this index location, right, it prints out only the element at that particular location. In that case, the element is A, right? If I say print letters at index one, right? Print letters at index two, right? Print letters at index three, all right? So we should see the individual comments contents, not comments, being printed out, right? 
So this shows you then how you can access each individual item in the list by its positional index notation, right? Now, what if I were to change this to four? I mean, there are four things in our list. Let's run it. And so all of these execute print letters, zero, one, and two, all of that executed, but notice we've got an error here. And we've got index error, list index out of range associated with this line. Like there are four items in the list, but because we can start counting with zero, we have zero, one, two, and three. So the last index notation is always one less than the length of our list. So three, it knew about four was an error. Right. And let's see. Something else Python does is it allows you to use negative numbers to access a list element. So if I say minus one, minus one gives us what's in the end of the list. So if we run that, notice now it printed out E. So minus one gives you what's at the end of the list. And you can go ahead and change this to minus two. All right, it'll give you the next to the last item in the list which could be handy if you don't, if you simply want to know what's at the end of the list and you don't know its particular index location. So, uh, these are not something that I use very often in my programming, but you may find handy. And you may see sometimes and wonder what they're all about. Uh, one other thing in terms of our list, we could print out the length. So there's a function named length. Actually, I think it's name length. And nope, it's not. I should go with that because it knows what it's doing. So here, if I wanted to go ahead and print out the length of the list, so length of list letters is if I want to append that to it, now, let's see if I get an error. Oh, I didn't save my file. Let me save it. All right. I got an error here, which I expected to get, because the length of letters returns an integer. So type error must be string, not int. See, I'm mixing strings and ints. So to go back to an earlier lesson, we said if we want to append an integer to a string message, we convert it to a string. So that whole result returned an int. I said, go ahead and convert it to a string. Let's run that. And it will now print out the length of list letters is four. All right. Uh, so like I said, the length function will tell you the length of your list. That can come in handy at times. There are things, uh, some other things associated with lists. Let's see, that's how to access them. Uh, let's add something to the end of our list. So let's just go ahead and let me get rid of this. Let's just work with our list of dogs and we're going to add item to end of list using append. So we often say append something to the end of the list. So I can say dogs.append. We call this method that's already written and associated with list. And now I'll say, let's go ahead and add then spaniel to the end of the list. I don't think double quotes will get me in trouble. Everything else in the list is in single quotes. Um, half afraid to mix them. All right, trying to be consistent. And now let's print out what's in dogs. So print dogs. And if we let's print dogs here. Save this run this. All right, so you can see then the first print gave us the list of four. We now appended, so that adds Spaniel at the end, right, and printed that out to see that we added our new one at the end. So append will always 
allow you to add an item to the end of a list. Uh, you can insert an item into a special place in the list. Right, uh, so if I wanted to insert an item, there's a function called insert. So, insert item uh, into list. Right. So now, let's say dogs.insert. So when I hit the dot operator, notice how this brings up some different methods associated then with this list object. And so now I have to give it the index location. So if I say zero, and no, let's see, I need a uh, terrier, beagle, husky, there's tons of other dogs. Uh, I'm just gonna say lab for Labrador retriever. All right, and this should insert this at the front of the list. So let's print dogs again, let's print this out, save it. Uh, clear this, let's run it. All right, here's our original list. Here's our list where we appended Spaniel at the end. And then insert, this gives it the index location where we want to insert it. So we wanted to insert it at location zero, which was the start of the list. All right, what if we said location one? So let's save that, rerun it. So notice this puts it in index location one. So insert, you tell it the index location where you want that, it's in the list, and it puts it in that particular location. Uh, that can be handy once as well. And then since we insert, we can also remove items from a list, right? And so we have to know the position if we want, if we use something called the delete statement. So, so delete item from list must know location. All right, so now if we say dogs.dl, Hmm. That's not the method I wanted. Hmm. This might be a Python 2 thing. Um, oh, yeah, it's not DEL. It's not a method. So notice, right, I type dogs dot that. It's really not a method of this particular list object. There's actually a function called del for delete. And let me say what I want to delete. And so I'm gonna say dogs at index two. So I give it, I have to use, remember with the index notation, we use the square brackets. And then let's print our dogs list. And let's save and run this. All right, so here's our original list. Here's where we appended Spaniel to the end. Here's where we inserted lab at index position one. And then here we said, let's remove, what was it, two? Well, two was terrier. So you can see when we printed out, terrier is gone from the list. So the delete function then, along with that particular element, will allow you to get rid of something in that list. Uh, there's a method called pop associated with lists that allows you to remove things from the end of the list. There's lots of different ways to remove things. You could actually remove it uh, by searching through the list for that particular function. Uh, last thing I wanna show you that comes in handy, right, is let's sort the list. All right, so let's, I guess we can keep printing things. Let's sort the list. And so we're going to say dogs dot sort, and then we're going to print dogs. And that's going to change the order of our list. So let's clear this, let's run this. All right, original list, appended spaniel, added lab, remove terrier, and so now, 
notice that this is sorted this into alphabetical order, right? Simply because these are character strings, the way it sorted it was to sort it by alphabetical order, right? So we've changed then the order of our list. So the sort comes in handy when you're working with, often when you're working with numbers, or if you want things in alphabetical order. All right, uh, I think that is a fairly decent introduction to working with lists. Like I said, there's other methods as well to work with them, but those are some of the things that you'll most commonly use when working with a list in our course. All right, thanks for watching. Uh, I should be like all the people that say, hey, don't forget to subscribe and like. All right, get the YouTube algorithm to get, get this published. Ha, ha, ha. All right, thanks for